She could but have writing and better. direction. So if they had this, maybe the same director and the same writer. They did. They did. The director is really Scott. Oh shoot! I missed that one right on the curb. <laughs> like Ridley boom. Scott, same director. I feel like he's just. Interesting. I'm sorry, Ridley Scott. I don't know what best. happened. Maybe a couple years went by and you're ready to retire or something because that's crazy. Hey guys, this is Sarah and David with Pasuk Films. We are going to do a movie review on Gladiator number two. My filming journey, as you know, we do film work, started with Gladiator one. After I watched the first movie, and it wasn't the violence, it wasn't the war or anything like that. It was whenever Maximus had his hands through the wheat field. When I saw that shot, I was like, I gotta do this. Whatever this is, I gotta do it. I did want to add a funny little story that about 10 years ago, when we were just dating, I loved Gladiator 2, and I knew at that time I wanted to do movies as well. And David throws me out in a field as an actor, and one of the scenes he wanted me to do was some chick brushing my hands through the field. And because I love gladiators so much, I did it. But I said to him, I was like, David, I don't want to do this because all I get is gladiator vibes as I'm doing it. And it felt so silly, like I was reenacting the movie. And to this day, I still joke with him about it. First thing, the story. What do you got to say about the story? So yeah, I have a lot to say about the story. We went and watched it this afternoon after watching the first one last night to just kind of remember the movie, even though most of the plot and the story is kind of stuck in our heads. So in the beginning, one of the things that I know um, movies are pushing today, and in some movies, I think it works, like Wonder Woman, for example, okay? If you like that type of stuff, right? In the scene between Hanel, his the main character, and his wife's name, I Arishat. think is Arishat. It looks like she's gonna be a housewife and he's married, which is great. You know what I mean? They're working in the field or something like that. And within like the first few minutes of the film, all of a sudden he gets called that he has to do, um, he has to fight for war or something protect like that. Protect the city. Like protect the city. Well, you expect him to go to war, and but then all of a sudden the next scene, like the next shot that happens, you see that she's a warrior princess. And like, here's the thing. I'm a girl and I have no problems with like warrior princesses and girls being able to do some of the things that guys can do and like they're they're strong in certain areas but you don't have to always shove that into every movie especially the classics and this being like a second film like I just it just didn't make sense it kind of was thrown in there like they were trying to fill a quota of some sort mm -hmm. and what it did as well is it put more characters in the film where it already had a lot of characters to try to build um, character arc for these people so that didn't work out if they're gonna keep the wife she should have just been a wife and it would have been more impactful the way she died instead of being a warrior prince getting shot by arrows they just needed to give her character more than just a five second scene of a kiss between husband and wife because throughout the entire film as you're sitting there and you're watching it you you don't even remember the wife anymore like this whole like fight that Hanel has against like Rome the wife, like, she just becomes so forgotten because her scene was so short. There was no connection to her character. And you didn't care and if she died. And it died off within the first five minutes. Go ahead. Yeah, you didn't fall for her because you didn't know who she was. And she's there and she dies and you're like, okay, so what? Like, there's no connection between the audience and her. They, at that point, they also, because this is like the first five or ten minutes of the film, they hadn't even helped you, like, handle Lucius. So you don't even know him as a character yet either. Like I remember from Gladiator 1, so um, Maximus, the main character, they did such a good job of following, like felt like they just kind of just followed him throughout the film, just letting you know who he is. And then all these other side characters, you started to grow in love because as they followed him, then they started inserting them. But they made sure you got to know those characters. So you can feel something like you already knew. What's that, uh, I forget the main guy who's the evil guy. The his name? Oh my goodness. Joaquin Phoenix? <laughs> yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. I forget his character's name. What is that, his name? Do I don't know? remember. Okay, so Joaquin Phoenix's character, you knew that you didn't like him from the beginning. You just knew it, you know? But then you also knew that you liked his sister in the beginning. They did such good character development with her, with uh, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix's character. 
Even the dad, that he, he only had but so many minutes of fame in the beginning of the movie, and he died, and yet you felt for him. Powerful. It was powerful. It, it was powerful, yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to the story, it felt like they're trying to cram a lot into a small, even though the movie is really long, but they're putting so much that it was more meant for like a TV show. That's the amount of information they're trying to pull into the film. I will say the beginning of the movie, and you'll have to watch it to see for yourself. Um, I'm an 80s girl, like I was born in the 80s. And I remember going to one of my friend's houses and her brother, I believe, was playing this movie called Waterworld. And the way their intro for the first 10, 15 minutes of the movie, outside of seeing the first few seconds of the husband and wife together, it really felt like I was in the middle of Waterworld and movie. So if you don't know what that movie is, we might insert that in here so you can see a scene. And then the connection where uh, Lucila finds out that that's her son, which is so easy. It should have been harder for her to realize that was her son. He's talking about like you're kind of towards the middle the end of the movie. Yeah. Lucia is her name? Yeah. Lucia sees her son out there in the middle of there and for whatever reason, just because he picked up a little bit of dirt. Instead of phrase. Instead of phrase, she knew it was him. But the truth is, is so many years had passed, somebody else out there, I mean, all like these warriors, all they have out there is dirt. So when you're afraid of being fought at and you're, and you're anticipating whatever the fight's gonna look like, what are you gonna do? You might actually pick up dirt. So those connections, Seemed just It just seemed so easy that she recognized it and knew it instantly. She should have known it instantly. So one of the other things um, when you watch this three hour long film that you think to yourself is they have these little short flashbacks of um, child Lucius who is Hyannal and his mother and how she sends him away. They're really quick. They're only there for a brief moment, but I feel like the story would have done better if they actually positioned the mother in the beginning, like, you know how she was thrown in Gladiator 2 right there in the beginning? Like, it was her kingdom, you know? And um, I think we should have started that film in that kingdom with her there. And you could have watched him, Hanel or Lucius, grow up with her. And at some point, because of something going on where the, she felt like she needed to protect her child, then you see him being pushed out of the kingdom and having to escape for his own safety. Not see little tiny clips that are just like thrown in. Just to just to add to that, like the movie is a lot of it's just in Rome in this Colosseum. They rushed into Rome too quickly. I feel like it would have been better if they expounded the story of Lucius out in Nubia and kind of grew and followed his journey. And then in the end, more towards the climax is where more of the fighting happens. Absolutely. And the, yeah. the tension would go up and there'd be a high peak to the tension. Because it felt like it was so rushed. You didn't get a chance to uh, feel the environment the that you're in. Yeah. 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 That's like a huge problem that I had with the story. And that what comes with the story is the script. What are your thoughts on the script? <laughs> I hear this line often is bad script writing. Well, okay, this is a big motion picture and it I don't know how much money it cost, but having so much money involved in this movie, they could have hired someone that could have transformed that script to actually meet and align better with the first Gladiator. You know, in the first movie, like um, Maximus says these really cool quotes and it fit really well because it was new, like strength and honor or We'll see in the, uh, what is it called, Elysium or whatever. Those little quotes are really awesome. Mm -hmm. But whenever you try to suck those quotes back into a sequel, it kind of take it, it comes more cliche than anything, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like some of the dialogue was taken from the previous movie and they put some modern wording and which doesn't make sense when you're trying to watch a historical mm -hmm. film, even though yeah. it's not really technically fully historical and accurate, but it is in that time period, you know. Like basically what I had said um, when we were talking about it when we left the theater is it feels like the backbone of the script from the first Gladiator, they literally took that whole thing, laid it down, and just inserted a few new things here and there to make it feel different. And that's why it's bad script writing, because once again, you don't you don't take something and just try to regurgitate the same thing, unless that's exactly what you're trying to do. So if they wanted to make Gladiator the like a renew like a newer version of it, then that's what they should have done instead of say, calling it Gladiator Two and making it feel just like Gladiator One, but like the thumbs down version. Yeah. So. 
So what yeah. do you think of the cast of the film? The one that stands out the most to me, and I am a Denzel Washington fan, okay? I would have been much happier with his role in here if he felt like he fit in the to the world. Yeah. Like one of the things that like Denzel Washington, you know what he looks like, you know his hair's cut, you know all that stuff. Maybe put a hat on his hair or a hat on his head or put hair on his head. Yeah. But the biggest or thing that really, or yeah, or a beard. But the biggest takeaway too that really made him stand out is, so when you remember the previous movie, everyone had that like accent that made you feel otherworldly and in that world of Rome, right? Not saying they didn't have like our accent like in the American English, language. Like American English. But he was like the only one that had it. Yeah. And it made it stand out just a little bit not, too much. Not only that, it was his, Denzel Washington has this really cool bad A, you know, gangster talk, which is cool for certain movies. But in this, it kind of like didn't fit. It felt like he was in the wrong movie. Absolutely. And it has nothing to do with his skin color or anything. It's just, I think it's a wrong casting. Unless he decided to change, give himself an accent and not have his, you know, usual tone of how he talked. Mm -hmm. It kind of threw you out of the movie a little bit. Even though I like Denzel, he's a really good actor. Actually, to be honest, for me specifically, I think he was the best actor of the whole film. But he just was in the wrong film. <laughs> that makes sense. Because like, I feel like the actor who played Lucius, he was, very, he was flat. Like, there was no dynamic for him. Even in his last speech, her, it was very like, they had the need of the music to make it more powerful than himself. Like, it was my last speech in the scene? Yeah, it was kind of weak. It was definitely a, it was a weak, weak speech, but I will say this, and this is part of my notes. There's a couple, I know I'm kind of going in back in the scenes a little bit, but that scene in the end where you have the bat, like there was supposed to be a war between Rome and then, I forget what they call it, like the city people or it something? It was like the Roman Legion and it was the Praetorian Guard, which okay. is like the city. Warriors. So he uh, defeats. I don't want to. I don't want to reveal too much because I don't know if everyone's seen the movie. So I'm not going to say who Spoilers. dies and all that stuff. This is. This will not be a spoiler because I'm not going to say the whole thing. But I will say this. Actually, this is a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a spoiler. But the end, where you have those two meeting in the middle before they fight and before he has his speech, they actually end up not fighting each other, and that is a rarity because most of the time when you watch like war movies. A lot of times when it comes to that climax to the end when they're supposed to fight each other, that final war happens. And that's the one, like there's a couple scenes that stood out that were okay in this movie that I thought was great because it was different. And that was one of them and I did enjoy that. Other than yeah. that one character, Lucius, yeah. not having it's such a... flat, yeah. It, but it, that has a lot more to do with possibly the script writing than it does the actor himself. L Lucila, the one that played the mom, she was a little, little uh, whiny to me. Some mm -hmm. of her her crying scenes were a little too much, a little too whiny mm -hmm. to me specifically. So I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Yeah, and <laughs> you know what's weird about? is I liked her in Gladiator too. I loved her personality. I loved her spunk and I loved her strength in Gladiator 1. I don't know if I said Gladiator 2, but Gladiator 1. Yeah. Um, but in this movie, I know that she's older and that's okay because we all change as we get older. Our appearances can change and stuff like that. But it wasn't that. I just like the way they wrote her in, once again, her whole storyline with her husband, her new husband, with her son, it felt very forced. And it didn't yeah. feel like an authentic, like even when they saw each other for the first time, it wasn't like an authentic relationship. Even the husband, her third husband at this point that I'm aware of, um, or maybe second. second. Either way, that didn't, I didn't feel relationship there. The only reason why I knew they were even married is because they said it. You know what I'm saying? Not that you have to see something crazy, but like the the, eye the contact, connection between the know. characters just wasn't there. Same thing with her you and know? Lucius. It didn't feel like they were the mother and son connection either. Mm -hmm. They both didn't respond well. And kind of piggybacking that, Lucius, spoiler alert, he forgives um, the killing of his, of his wife too quickly to me. Mm. You know, I don't like that. You're talking about whenever uh, Mama. Like he was so upset and he wanted to kill the whole world, especially the, the, that specific general. But then he like switched so quickly and like, oh, it's okay. I love you. And he tells his mom he loves him like so quick. He didn't, even have, he didn't even have a chance to build a relationship with her to say he loves yeah. her. Just yeah, like a time sense. lapse of him for getting to that point of forgiveness. Like in the first movie, there was a growth between Lu Lucia and Maximus, where they didn't like each other, 
and then slowly started falling for her, like trusting her.、Mm-hmm. You know, so they didn't have that at all in this one, which was unfortunate. And then the other characters, the two brother twins, I call them the twins. Well, they're yeah. <laughs> the, I don't know if they were or not. I think historically they were a year apart. Yeah. But anyways, those two. I don't know. I didn't care for them either. I just feel like they weren't, they weren't scary. You didn't like feel like the first movie. They, I think, like they wanted to replicate Joaquin Phoenix's weird psycho behavior with these two, kind of mirror it. But it just didn't work to, for me. It didn't work. It just they just were two clowns, you know. <laughs> And that kind of piggybacks with Denzel Washington because he ends up spoiler. He's a, he becomes he's a bad guy. And you don't feel like he's a bad guy. You don't feel like he is threatening. There's no like real good bad guy in this movie. They're just、yeah. f- flat, okay. Oh yeah, he's bad, I guess. Kind of feeling, you know. There's a, well, there's a scene with the two twins where they're getting ready to fight the traitors, which is the mother and her step husband. I wish I knew their names. Okay, Kesa Lucia. and Lucia. Okay, Lucia. okay, okay. So those two, as he had said earlier on, is a spoiler alert. They become traitors to the Roman government. Okay, so these two strange twinsies are like the rulers, the head up there. They come over there trying to attack. Well, one twin holds back the other twin, and as I'm watching this, because I'm a Lord of the Rings fan, a lore fan, right? All I can see is Pippin and Merry dancing on a table. Drinking their beer, smoking their pipe, and just—I don't know—I kept going back to Lord of the Rings scene. It's kind of like the whole situation where you want to fight. You're like, hold me back, hold me back, but you don't actually want to fight.、It's、it looks like, like it that. Kinda, it just looks like, silly. Yeah, it <laughs> looks really silly, and it, it brought me back to the Lord of the Rings. So, anyways, <laughs> that's kind of funny. <laughs> so, the cinematography, as I, I love cinematography, and that's kind of my first love when it comes to making movies. It was great, really beautiful. It felt like real and grounded. I really like that. Even the over-the-top scenes, they weren't as over-the-top as some people were saying. So, I like the, the cinematography. The colors are really nice, very earthy tones.、Um, yeah. Can I? Add, I'm going to add to the cinematography, and I, I don't know if this is qualified under it, but some of the CGI though. That's the next.、One. Okay, so we're going into that. Some of the CGI. One of them, and it's really close in the beginning. You have these monkeys running out to attack them, and One, I don't know about monkeys attacking the way they were attacking viciously. Two, the CGI just was not it. Yeah, it was just way. The, the monkeys looked fake, and they looked over the top. The mat, like they're, they looked like they were like mixed breed monkeys on crack or something crazy. It makes me think of that movie we watched. Those classics of the monkeys. Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe we'll insert a clip in here so you can see what I'm talking about. But there's a movie, like there's a couple, and there's a whole series of, and it's about these monkeys, and the CGI gets really good, actually. Do you know what I'm talking about? But what it reminded me of is the beginning stages of that film. It's like a whole series of them of movies. Oh, Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes, yeah. Like it reminded me of the beginning days,、stages. the Planet of the Apes. But even、nice. the beginning, they were in costumes, so you knew they were real. But you just knew there's a person. Well, that、them. was the joke. Yeah,、okay. is it? <laughs> it didn't but feel it just didn't feel. <laughs> And then the first couple shots of the boats coming in, they looked, they weren't the best. They weren't bad, but they weren't the best. And then there was an、uh, overhead shot of sharks in the water of the Colosseum. It looked fake. It looked bad.、Mm-hmm. So yeah, CGI. Overall, though, CGI I think was really well. The city looked beautiful. It looked real. It looked like it was supposed to be there. Like the buildings and everything. It felt larger than life. Cause you know how it is with the you know Marvel where everything CGI except the face. It's totally opposite. I feel like、mm-hmm. it was mostly in reality, and there's a couple CGI. That's kind of what it felt like. So I, I, I was overall. Pretty... I'm with you on the C,、uh, CGI, right? You're saying yeah, CGI. Yeah, CGI was good, and then also、um, the cinematography. I stand with you on that too. Yeah. But leaning into, or I think this is exiting out of the cinematography. One of the things that I thought was a little bit too much. And this is going back into maybe like the scenes. Is I feel like it felt like every five minutes there was a fight and gore. Every five minutes, and it's like, it never stopped. It got to the point where I'm sitting in the theater and like, 
I'll be honest, I'm not a person that sits there and watch Blood and Bath all the time. And like, I like war movies, but I like them more specifically when it's less of that because you don't need all that to emphasize war. You know, and you're about and to when you have that. a lot of you know blood and a lot of violence, it becomes it's not as it makes the biggest moments in the end or wherever you're trying to have that yeah, climax. Yeah, it takes away from it. Yeah. So there's something I've learned is that when you have too much going on, like too much action, it becomes no action. Like you want to have moments where it brings you into that moment. You want to have like silent moments and build up moments. When you it's just constant of action or constant of anything, it becomes nothing at all if that makes sense mm -hmm. might not be explained correctly but it just doesn't doesn't work music was great i really like how they had different sounds different soundtracks and then they added elements of the previous movie however it felt like they're trying to piggyback on the original soundtrack. original soundtrack to emphasize your emotions to the nostalgia it definitely wasn't the music in the first trailer though that we all watched and loved <laughs> One out of five. What What do you think of the story? One out of five. Oh boy. Uh, one out of five. One out Not of five. out of one out of ten. You want to do one out of ten? No, I'm being funny. One out of five. I'm gonna give it a two. I couldn't find any connection to any of the characters, even the ones that I really loved, like Lucia. I loved her character from the original, and then I even loved the child actor who played Lucius in the first Gladiator. But as an adult and his character in there, I couldn't, I didn't fall for that connection. I didn't, um, I didn't relate to him in any way. And how do I say it? I just, I wasn't pulled by any emotions in any moment where he almost even died. You know what I'm saying? They had him in so many different war scenes where he could have died and being attacked and all this stuff. And I didn't feel anything towards him. And he's the lead character and I felt nothing. Yeah. You know? So for me, it's like story one and a half to two. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. It's the sequel that could have been. I feel like there was so much potential, even though I think if they did a re-edit and cut certain things and made it a, a, an hour and a half type of movie, it would be better. It'd become mm -hmm. a three in story. Was there anybody in there that we liked as a character? Uh, I, I really would like to think about that. Is there anybody? I think the when it comes to the characters, I, like, I think the general is probably the best character. And that was the stepfather, right? The father, yeah. Well, the stepfather, stepfather yeah. yeah. Pedro Pascal, the General Acacius. I think he was the best character. So we watched Wonder Woman recently, and that character, the general, and also Lucia, her character, played in Woman, or Wonder Woman. For some reason, I, all I could see was them, their <laughs> characters in Wonder Woman, watching Gladiator. Yeah, so <laughs> It was very funny. I think if they edited it better, the story would be better. So editing wise, I would say it's a three editing. Well, as we know with editing, editing is not just the editor, so it's the director that actually working behind the scenes. Yeah. And we both know that role very well. <laughs> and editing can make a cinematographer or director look bad. Look bad or look better. So we don't know, like I can't, because I wasn't there, honestly say who is 100% at fault, but I will say the director, if he had the position to speak up, he could have changed a few things. And like what he's talking about is if someone handed us Gladiator 2, we would rework it in the way we would see fit to make it a better movie. Yeah, better story, so, the flow. Yeah. Because the flow wasn't good, it was too rushed, there was no breathing room. What's your rating on the script? Oh gosh, I, I feel like I'm already answering the same thing. I'm gonna give them a two again yeah, it's a, in the script writing. I wanted to say, I don't know how long they spent in pre-production for this movie and how long the writer for the script spent doing it, but I feel like they should have taken the script to, I, don't, I mean, I don't know what they did once again because I wasn't with them, but taking it to other people to give them some insight on what direction to go with it because I feel like there's gotta be someone out there, especially the people, maybe taking it to people that have that nostalgia like people like us, like the fans, right? Yeah. Because, or, or someone that within their crew that is a fan, you know, it just, I, I feel like it missed the I whole feel point. Like, yeah. I wonder if it, the whole movie was rushed to make it. Mm -hmm. Like I think they should have spent more time in the writing room and the story creating and all that kind of stuff. And it would have been a better movie. So the cast, rate the cast. Mm. <laughs> Gosh, I'm gonna have to give it a one. I'm, and I don't mean to be mean or anything, but they're like not one cast member really had me like where I want to remember this movie in the next 10 to 20 years. 
Like I will always remember Maximus from the first Gladiator. I will always remember, and I always will always want to remember Lucia from the first Gladiator, not the second Gladiator, okay? But I love their character then. And even Luce, was his name Lucius? Joaquin Phoenix in the, what was his name I as a character? Know. Why can't I remember that? But anyways, his character was also so memorable that whenever you see him in another movie, you always go back and you remember the beginning days of Gladiator that he was in. Yeah. And what other characters did you have in there? I know those are the three main, oh, the father stands out big time for me. The general, and then the sidekick. I call him the sidekick because I don't know his name. But the main core guy that was a slave that would hang out with Maximus yeah, all the time. Yeah, he was a gladiator he was with a warrior. Maximus and he had that he had that, an accent. It was like a, they had like a African. friendship, friendship bond. Yeah. That you can just feel. You know, I always looked at that like, man, I want to have that friendship bond in a movie. Kind of reminds me of the movie. I don't know if you've seen the movie Four Feathers. It had the same kind of dynamic. Mm -hmm. So what's your rating? I mean, cast. I'd give it a two still. So. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> well, I think. <laughs> I just didn't want to be all twos all down the line, you know. So you I know, had to go one. which surprising me. I, I think. The person who acted the best again was Denzel Washington, but it's the wrong movie. It's in the wrong movie. But overall, I would say it's um, Pedro Pascal, which I don't find him as a good actor, but he did the best in this movie. That goes to show you how the casting wasn't the best. And that is the main character, right? No, that is the the general. Oh wow! I think he was the yeah. best ca cast. You know, he to is. Me. He was. Um... He felt like he felt he should have been the lead. I just shouldn't have watched Wonder Woman like a week ago. <laughs> he didn't do good in that movie. But I didn't like him in that movie. Really? Yeah, I didn't. I yeah. liked him in Wonder Woman. I, I don't know why. Just, I, he wasn't I a did. bad guy. Like, anyways. I don't know. I liked him for some reason. Anyways, go ahead. But I think he was the best, like, casted person in the movie. I think, I feel like they should have got a better, but a stronger lead because the Lucius character, he just felt, even though he's like the really buff guy he was a weak character he didn't have like he didn't have the aura of the room he didn't you know there's certain people when they walk in the room they just take the whole attention like cam newton he was he like he didn't have that at all he was just like very flat and it might be just you know him as an actor or the character they want him they wanted him to play but it was just not there for me. i have the best actor i think his name was dodo and he was a little monkey that hung out on the blonde guy's shoulder I really liked his <laughs> acting skills, man. <laughs> oh, and on ratings, just want to add this rating. Would I rate this movie for children? Absolutely not. There's too much blood and too much gore just constantly. Yeah. And there's a little bit of cursing. A little too much for me. And there was a little scene that they kind of hid in the background mm. that of a woman that I would say, there. no. I wasn't there for that. I went to the bathroom and that's all. Kind of yeah, was it was one of those things. <laughs> well, here's the thing. They inserted it into a scene where it wasn't in the forefront, but it was in the background. Yeah. So it was kind of like hanging out there. Subliminal. And it was a subliminal message, definitely. And I'm sure there was other ones, but this one stood out to me as a woman. And I'm just like, the first gladiator was so clean. Other than the war scenes, even, and we are believers, even the Bible has war scenes in there. So to me, yeah. war scenes, like, okay, just not too much, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So anyways, go ahead. Like Lucia, or what's her name? She just didn't feel like she was there. Like she, there was no connection between her and her husband or no connection between her and Lucius. And she's a little over the top with her crying. She didn't feel like the same character anymore. That's the kind of thing we were talking about yeah. earlier. And it's harder to get into the same character when you, it's been so long to try to mimic that same. But it, I feel like she could. But the writing done and better. direction. So if they had this, maybe the same director and the same writer. They did. They did. Director is really Scott. Oh shoot! I missed that one right on the curb. <laughs> like Ridley blew my... Scott, same director. I feel like he's just. Interesting. I'm sorry, Ridley Scott. I don't know what best. happened. Maybe a couple years went by and you're ready to retire or something because that's crazy. Yeah, you were one of my favorite directors. That's kind of yeah, interesting. Disappointing a little bit. Okay. Okay, cinematography. Rate the cinematography. Ugh. I'll give them a five. five. Cinema was good. Yeah, five. One of my favorite scenes with cinematography even um, that I talked about earlier when we were leaving the theater. Um, I really like the scene where the water was filled up inside the Colosseum. 
I'll be honest with you, that yeah, was one of the, and, cool. and not to mention that was one of the scenes that stood out to me that made the movie feel different. You're looking for what makes it feel different from the first Gladiator, so the plot's not the same. Yeah. It was so different in that way, the way they fought in war, and it made sense like why the guy, that there was like some slave leader or something teaching him how to row, remember as a teen? Yeah. Oh, there yeah, was a yeah. point to that. Yeah. Remember when he, and then he made him do it all night by himself, the lead guy, Lucius. Which Tommy. reminds me of yeah. another story problem. They made the, Lucius be a leader too quickly. He didn't earn that right. I feel like they needed mm. him. Like right away, the first fight, he was a leader. Like mm -hmm. that just doesn't, I didn't like that. I feel like Maximus, there needed to be some growth. He had growth. Like you knew that he was a leader. Yeah, he had growth. Yeah. Some music. I'll give them music. I mean, because it had the original nostalgic tracks, I'll give them like a three and a half, four. Because I like music and I didn't hear any weird stuff in there, meaning the one from the first trailer, so it made it much, much better. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, for me, music, a five would have been as if it's so awesome that I want to listen to it again while I'm editing or if I'm doing some work on the background. It was like a three, three and a half, where it didn't take you away from the movie, and it, mm -hmm. it didn't really bring you in. They were kind of relying on old soundtrack. So I'd say a three and a half. The reason I'm getting a higher score because they had the old soundtrack. Yeah, you know? three and a half. Whenever you hear it, you're still gonna remember four, the old, maybe. the original. Say three and a half. Yeah. 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 CGI. Mm. Give it a three, three and a half, maybe. Because there's a couple scenes like that. I can't. I'll never forget the monkeys coming out looking like CGI, just like little stickers coming out of the screen or something. So I I know CGI is like, it's not the easiest whenever there's like a lot of time crunches and studios want it done quickly. I'm giving it a four, maybe a four and a quarter. Very nice. If it wasn't for the monkeys, it'd be close to a five because movies these days with the CGI, it's so bad. Mm -hmm. And this felt like it was all, still felt like it was out at the location rather than in the studio. Okay, so I'll, I'll up it a little bit. I think the monkey one really Monkeys took my bad. score down. So we'll go back because I keep forgetting it's one to five. I'll give them the four too. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> the rhino was not too bad. Oh, the rhino scene. It, it wasn't too bad. I just feel, I, I'll give it a four. Okay, so the rhino scene that you'll see coming up gave me also lore vibes where when the dwarf comes riding down on the pig at the end the for Hobbit. the battle in The Hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> When you see that scene, you'll see it too, okay? It's got total lore vibes, okay? Anyways. <laughs> okay, last segment. The good, the bad, and the ugly. What do you got? The good, the bad, and the ugly? Yeah. What do you got so I know what I piggyback off of? <laughs> the good. I think the good was the world. The, the, the cinematic world, which is like CGI, cinematography. When you saw the images of the city of, of Rome, it looked really, really good. I feel like it was really there. I really like that. And then while they're tra traversing through the city, it felt big. It felt like, uh, yeah, it felt really big. There's a lot of extras. Even if they're like CGI doubles, it looked like they were actually there. So that was my good. The bad, the cast is the bad for me. The cast. I feel like they should have done a better job casting certain characters. And then my ugly is the story. So it's the good, the bad, and the ugly, it's three? Yeah. The good, oh, but it's really hard for me because this movie is not a fan favorite for me like at all. But I'll go with the cinematography as well. Yeah. I'll say visually, like locations where they filmed at were very pretty locations. They definitely like eye candy in that way. Um, set design was really, really good. Costume design yeah. Yeah. was really good. You know, oh and yeah, I, kind of piggyback on you, the costume of the soldiers, man. Cool. Yeah, like the, the, it looked real authentic. So that's the good, the bad, just the obnoxious characters. <laughs> like, I just, I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't fall in love with anyone. And I really wanted to like it having like the main character, Lucia from the original. Um, I, I even wanted to like the main character because casting wise, I think visually he could work as the son, especially as like trying to look like Maximus maybe. Some way, I just spoiler alert if you understood what I just said. Oh, yeah, they so, try to give him that look a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So that was fine. And then the ugly was obviously the script and the direction of where the script went. And I just feel like it should have been reorganized or something. Like it could, I feel like the script had some potential. One, 
only use a couple phrases from the first movie. Let this movie be its own entity. Standalone. Standalone. It can still be the sequel, but a standalone, you know? Um, yeah, so stop using so much from the original script and then just reorganize the strip script a little bit, you know? Figure out what is important in the story. So when they were cutting this film together, I don't know if they had, like David said earlier, maybe a time crunch, but maybe they should have shot a couple extra scenes or something and decided to change the entrance of the, sh the whole movie. You know, like world I think- World building in the beginning. Yeah, world building. And I don't know if I would agree on keeping the, the wife that they put in there. Like the only way you can keep her is if you built a story around her so we can enjoy her character. Cause like I said, by the end of the movie, you forgot who she was. They actually kind of reintroduced her again through like a, just a, a flashback. Yeah. And I forgot about her. I actually yes. forgot about her and then it came back I'm like, oh yeah, that chick. You didn't care that she you died know? or anything. And it was weird because in Gladiator, you only seen like a short scene also of his wife, right? Maximus's wife before she died with her child. And yet because you fell in love with Maximus, his whole story, his wife, his child, all that stuff, the farm they lived on, it meant something to you when you got there. And even by the end of the movie, the flashback of it, it means something to yeah, you. Yeah, just to add to the first movie, Maxima talked about his wife and kids a lot. So overall, I feel like this movie was a sequel that could have been. Maybe they'll try again next time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's Gladiator's a movie that they should have not even made a sequel to. <laughs> it's a sequel that we didn't want, but if they were going to make it, I feel like you should do it right and people would be happy. A line that I kind of said after we left the theater is, the dream to Rome should have ended in the first Gladiator, not in the second one. Because if you remember how the first Gladiator ended, it was a, even though he died and you didn't want Maximus to die, it was still a beautiful ending. And you knew that um, Lucia became the leader and she's gonna rule the kingdom. And yeah. you felt good about it because her character development, she became a really good character and you knew she would rule it well, even based on her own father's language. This is the end of an honest review from two honest filmmakers and we will see you next time. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>